Hi guys, Iron Cameraman here. This fight between Astro Toilet and G-Man was truly legendary, and all of our assumptions that G-Man would come out victorious turned out to be true, even with the little mistake I'll tell you about later. But believe me, this fight is not the most interesting part. After all, we saw a powerful new Astro Toilet that can do things you can't even imagine. In addition, I will tell you why and how Cameraman Titan was able to start talking. After all, this is the first time in the series that Cameraman has ever been able to say anything. Before that, we've never seen a member of this race able to say anything. I'm not even talking about his legendary phrase, for plunger. For plunger. This, I think, will definitely go on the list of my favorite moments. And what's more interesting is that in this episode, we saw something completely unexpected. And I'm not even talking about Cameraman Titan's new arm. I'm talking about these electric charges from G-Man, as they have one small detail that you probably noticed, but maybe part of the viewers didn't realize what the weirdness and catch is here. To be honest, when I found this out, I was a little shocked myself. And believe me, that's not all I want to discuss today. It will be, as always, interesting and hot. So be sure to watch the video to the end and put a like if you like my theories. Anyways, here we go. The battle begins with a powerful shot of all of G-Man's lasers, but Astro Toilet not only managed to contain them, but redirected them at him. However, G-Man managed to protect himself with his shield, and thus the charge didn't reach him. And there is one catch. The thing is that he didn't even turn on his shield. Because if you look in slow motion, it's clear that it's more of a protective barrier than a shield. Since as soon as he's shot at, that shield almost always appears at the last second. Although further on, we see something strange. More on that later. Astro Toilet then decides to strike with three retractable tentacles. We saw a similar technology with the Cameraman Titan in episode 47. However, Astro likely has a more advanced version of this technology. Since his claws have the ability to act on his opponent's brain, it's likely that he would be able to not only attract G-Man to him, but also paralyze him or hypnotize him. So this protective barrier saved him once again, and he also helped himself with his jetpacks which he directed in the opposite direction to disengage from the tentacles. And here G-Man's shield disappears, and we see that the energy of this shield remains with Astro Toilet. So we can conclude that he had such a strong hold on G-Man that he was able to steal the charge that he subsequently fired. However, as it turns out, G-Man has another type of defense in the form of a helmet, which makes a very epic appearance. If you pay attention, he even automatically has his sunglasses go up. The plus side of this type of defense is that he was able to both stay safe and attack with his lasers at the same time. But even with that said, the Astro Toilet, as we can see from these shots, is stronger, and if it weren't for the Skibidi planes that came in very timely, G-Man might just not have survived. And that's just the first part of G-Man's plan. It was noticeable that he had prepared a lot for the fight, so he didn't chicken out as usual. After a couple of punches, he got so angry that he decided to take a quick bite out of everyone. And of course, G-Man didn't miss his chance to hit him with all his lasers when he was distracted by the planes. When the Astro Toilet rose up, we got our first glimpse of his damaged face. And at that moment, I remembered that scene from the Avengers movie when Thanos saw the first drop of blood after his battle with Iron Man. Because both Thanos and this Astro Toilet seemed very powerful and invincible to many. And so seeing his first mini defeats made it even more interesting to watch. And after seeing him say enough games, enough games. it also reminded me of Thanos' arrogant phrases. Basically, as I said in my previous videos, he thinks too highly of himself and therefore devalues the strengths of his opponents too much. Which is why he lost this battle, by the way, but we'll have more time to talk about that. On emotion, Astro Toilet was able to at least temporarily turn the tide. First he broke the left laser, and later the right one as well. To make matters worse, he managed to break G-Man's fancy mask as well. By doing so, he was able to grab his head with one claw while he was about to stab with the other. This is probably a reference to episode 60, where they tried to kill him in the same way. Incidentally, this is also the leak we saw on Dafuk Boom's Instagram. However, like I said, it's more of a troll leak, because it differs from the frame just a little bit. And plus, 
As we know, all troll leaks are done for the purpose of telling a bit of a story. And the interesting thing about all of this is that you often can't look at troll leaks as normal leaks. That's why I suggested in my old videos that this spoiler should be viewed the other way around. That is, I realized it was more for distraction, and it was unlikely that G-Man would lose, which is what we see here. All of a sudden, G-Man starts yelling like a complete crazy psychopath. When I first saw this, to be honest, I was even a little scared. And as you can tell from Astro Toilet's face, it was a surprise to him as well. G-Man was able to lead the battle again, but Astro Toilet didn't give up either and started using his super speed to attack. In fact, he could have taken and run away now, as G-Man even searched for him with his eyes and couldn't figure out where he was. This reminds us once again that Astro Toilet speed is a very powerful and cheating ability. But as we can see, this race is not one to abandon their opponents and walk away. They will see their cause through to the end. Poor G-Man's glasses first break from such strong blows, and later those glasses fly out of his head altogether. But the third time, he turns on his shield and stops the Astro Toilet. This is where the logical question arises. Since his shield was automatically activated before, why didn't it turn on at the first or second blow? All because he probably needed time to restore this protective barrier. After all, the Astro Toilet had sucked the energy from the old barrier with its tentacles. There's another explanation for this. Most likely, the barrier is turned on automatically not on everything that can damage him, but on different charges or projectiles. As for other types of damage, G-Man has to manually turn it on. He still manages to shoot at the Astro Toilet. But the Astro Toilet flies away again, and while G-Man doesn't realize where it's gone, it's already standing behind him, preparing to strike like a rat. This is also most likely a reference, and this time to episode 47. It was in this foul way, under the control of G-Man, the Speaker Man Titan hit the TV Man Titan screen. Incidentally, there was another reference to episode 47 a little later when TV Man turned on his red glow. By some super cool instinct, G-Man noticed in time that there was an enemy behind him and was able to use lasers from his eyes combined with a headbutt to push Astro Toilet away. The one already in his manner took a shot and said, hey, Give up, it's over for you. At this point, we might think that it was the charge that knocked G-Man's lasers out. That's why Astro Toilet said give up and thought he didn't have the strength to continue the battle. But as it turned out, this was also part of his big plan, and he turned off the lasers himself to make it look like he had a very weakened opponent. And that energy ball in general seemed too pathetic. So Astro Toilet also added the phrase, that's all? <laughs> Judging from this footage of G-Man looking at the balloon and it going where he wants it to go, they probably have on-the-fly control abilities. I think the usual purpose for this balloon is to explode after a while. After all, a little later we saw something similar with a new character. He had a balloon too, just a different color. So I think the scientist when he created this technology was inspired by the Red Astro Toilet technology. But of course, as we already know, G-Man came up with a very clever plan where the goal was not to blow up the balloon, but to purposely release it directly into the claws of the Astro Toilet. And here he repeats the same move. But if you look more closely, this time the balloons already have purple electric currents. Let me remind you that purple is the official color of the TV Man Titan, who has the ability to use the glow of the screens to hypnotize his opponent into killing himself. And here's my theory on the matter. We all know the scientist had a book of TV men. When he was still alive, he managed to incorporate many of their technologies into an enhanced G-Man. However, he didn't just bluntly copy the technology like he did with the screens, he was able to make him more advanced and very elaborate. It turns out he stole technology from the Astro Toilets with that balloon and stole technology from the TV men with hypnosis and combined it all into one big new technology. 
Once again, I marvel at the genius of the scientist. It didn't take long for the result of the brilliant plan to come to fruition. When those trap balls exploded in Astro Toilet's claws, he was very much frightened and realized that he had lost control of his two limbs. And as he shut himself down, we see a very satisfied look on G-Man's face. You can see that this is exactly how he envisioned the outcome of his plan. The enemy just kills himself. That's the dream of any fighter, and it was very funny to watch, because he finally paid for his arrogance and cruelty. Barely alive Astro Toilet, who managed to get rid of the infected claws, stood up and still wanted to continue the fight. This is where the most interesting part begins. We can see by the face and the laser on that my assumptions about the special deception lasers being turned off were justified. He was waiting for this moment and wanted to fire his final blow already, as here comes a new powerful character, which Boom already talked about in the exclusive interview. First of all, it's a very armored Astro Toilet. Second, he has a mask, like a character from Verlance's multiverse. I don't know if this is a reference or just a coincidence, but the fact is interesting. After all, since Verlance uses the same program as Da Fook Boom for their series, it's quite possible that Boom simply liked this mask, among other things, and decided to use it for his new character. One could immediately state the fact that this monster's energy balls dealt a huge amount of damage, since even G-Man's barrier couldn't withstand this blow, and Speakerman Titan fell at all because of its impact power. And by the way, if it wasn't for Speakerman Titan, then maybe the next hit on G-Man would have been lethal. So it turns out, by accident, the Alliance saved him from death. I certainly have nothing against Titans, but as far as I'm concerned, sometimes they take very rash actions before thinking. Although if you think about it, maybe Speakerman Titan just didn't see that red monster aiming at G-Man. After all, his view was blocked because of the mountains, and without figuring it out, he just decided to shoot on the fly. After which, the Red Astro Toilet decided to save his friend and did not continue to fight with no one. And from that, we can conclude that his only goal was to prevent the damaged soldier from dying. Remember when I said that Astro Toilets like to see things through to the end? Apparently, all of this is due to this very security guarantee from the Red Guards. It explains the brashness and arrogance of this race. In Episode 70, Big Astro wasn't even afraid to come and say that all the Titans were going to die. I wouldn't even be surprised if it turns out later that there's a UFO toilet sitting inside that red Astro toilet. After all, his face is covered for a reason. Since Dafuk Boom likes cool plot twists, it's likely that someone we already know is sitting under the mask. Also in the extra episode when the UFO toilet said something to the big Astro toilet, I think he was just saying he was giving the go-ahead for a security guarantee. And that's why he went so happily and started feeling like a king. A little bit later, Speakerman Titan fires a cannonball, and on the other side, TV Man Titan starts glowing a dangerous red color. And since G-Man had no glasses, there was a good chance that this time he would manage to kill him, and TV Man Titan would finish the job he started in episode 47 before the end. However, this time too, he managed to escape. And as we understand, it will not last long because the Titans will not leave it unnoticed. Speakerman Titan immediately began pursuit. Here we can see how he flies with all speed. TV Man, on the other hand, at this point says he will not escape this time. And then he also addresses Cameraman Titan with the words, Are you ready, bro? And Cameraman Titan traditionally picks up a new hand. But this time, probably, for the last time because now it is hard to imagine a stronger hand than Astro Toilet Claw. And at the end, the most legendary and epic moment, the cameraman Titan says these words. For pleasure. It sounded very appropriate. And in addition, the fact that these are his first words further reinforce the meaning of this phrase. Again, cameramen can't talk. And most likely, since this happened right after Astro Toilet's claw connected to Cameraman Titan's body, we can conclude that this is what gave him the ability to talk. I want to remind you that the claws essentially work on their own and are capable of their own brains, since G-Man was able to trick them and turn them against their owner. This is roughly the same thing we saw in the Spider-Man movie. Remember the moment when Spider-Man was able to control Octavius's claws? 
Well, it seems to me, since he started talking and this claw was able to somehow transfer the ability to speak Astro Toilets into the cameraman Titan's body, I don't think it's going to stop there. And the claw won't at some inopportune moment resist and do what it wants. Plus, G-Man has balls that can control this, so it's best that cameraman Titan be careful. However, even considering these risks, I am very glad that now Cameraman Titan will also be able to express himself with words and please us with his epic phrases. I'm going to make a separate video about Claws and Titan, where I will tell you more about everything that is connected with new technologies in the series. So be sure to subscribe to the channel not to miss the next video. And by the way, friends, I would like to apologize for the previous video. The thing is that today I double-checked the information about the texts in the leaks, and it turned out that there were no secret texts except for the number 74 in the leaks. Our team will check everything more carefully so that this will not happen again and so that I will not misinform you. Therefore, as compensation and gratitude for your support and activity, I decided to make you two gifts. First, I will soon have a room tour video where I will show you my room and face with a real voice. And secondly, since many people have asked for it, I decided to create our Discord server. There I'll be posting exclusive information about the channel and the Skibidi Toilet series. So make sure you stop by. The link is in the description. Bye.